March 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 18 through 20 of the Old Testament. The Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons and your tribe with you must bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and you and your sons with you must bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Bring with you your brothers, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, so that they may join with you and minister to you while you and your sons with you are before the tent of the testimony. They must be responsible to care for you and to care for the entire tabernacle. However, they must not come near the furnishings of the sanctuary and the altar, or both they and you will die. They must join with you, and they will be responsible for the care of the tent of meeting. For all the service of the tent, but no unauthorized person may approach you. You will be responsible for the care of the sanctuary and the care of the altar, so that there will be no more wrath on the Israelites. I myself have chosen your brothers, the Levites, from among the Israelites. They are given to you as a gift from the Lord to perform the duties of the tent of meeting. But you and your sons with you are responsible for your priestly duties, for everything at the altar and within the curtain, and you must serve. I give you the priesthood as a gift for service, but the unauthorized person who approaches must be put to death. The Lord spoke to Aaron, See, I have given you the responsibility for my raised offerings. I have given all the holy things of the Israelites to you as your priestly portion and to your sons as a perpetual ordinance. Of all the most holy offerings reserved from the fire, this will be yours. Every offering of theirs, whether from every grain offering or from every purification offering or from every reparation offering, which they bring to me, will be most holy for you and for your sons. You are to eat it as a most holy offering. Every male may eat it. It will be holy to you. And this is yours, the raised offering of their gifts, along with all the wave offerings of the Israelites. I have given them to you and to your sons and daughters with you as a perpetual ordinance. Everyone who is ceremonial clean in your household may eat of it. All the best of the olive oil and all the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of these things that they give to the Lord, I have given to you. And whatever first ripe fruit in their land they bring to the Lord will be yours. Everyone who is ceremonially clean in your household may eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel will be yours. The firstborn of every womb which they present to the Lord, whether human or animal, will be yours. Nevertheless, the firstborn sons you must redeem, and the firstborn males of unclean animals you must redeem. And those that must be redeemed you are to redeem when they are a month old, according to your estimation, for five shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel, which is twenty giras. But you must not redeem the firstborn of a cow or a sheep or a goat. They are holy. You must splash their blood on the altar and burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And their meat will be yours, just as the breast and the right hip of the raised offering is yours. All the raised offerings of the holy things that the Israelites offer to the Lord I have given to you and to your sons and daughters with you as a perpetual ordinance. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord for you and for your descendants with you. The Lord spoke to Aaron, You will have no inheritance in their land nor will you have any portion of property among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the Israelites. See, I have given the Levites all the tithes in Israel for an inheritance for their service which they perform, the service of the tent of meeting. No longer may the Israelites approach the tent of meeting or else they will bear their sin and die. But the Levites must perform the service of the tent of meeting and they must bear their iniquity. It will be a perpetual ordinance throughout your generations that among the Israelites the Levites have no inheritance. But I have given to the Levites for an inheritance the tithes of the Israelites that are offered to the Lord as a raised offering. That is why I said to them that among the Israelites 
they are to have no inheritance. The Lord spoke to Moses, You are to speak to the Levites, and you must tell them, When you receive from the Israelites the tithe that I have given you from them as your inheritance, then you are to offer up from it as a raised offering to the Lord a tenth of the tithe. And your raised offering will be credited to you as though it were grain from the threshing floor or as new wine from the wine press. Thus you are to offer up a raised offering to the Lord of all your tithes which you receive from the Israelites. And you must give the Lord's raised offering from it to Aaron the priest. From all your gifts you must offer up every raised offering due to the Lord, from all the best of it and the holiest part of it. Therefore you will say to them, when you offer up the best of it, then it will be credited to the Levites as the product of the threshing floor and as the product of the winepress. And you may eat it in any place, you and your household, because it is your wages for your service in the tent of meeting. And you will bear no sin concerning it when you offer up the best of it. And you must not profane the holy things of the Israelites, or else you will die. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded. Instruct the Israelites to bring you a red heifer without blemish, which has no defect and has never carried a yoke. You must give it to Eliezer the priest so that he can take it outside the camp, and it must be slaughtered before him. Eliezer the priest is to take some of its blood with his finger and sprinkle some of the blood seven times directly in front of the tent of meeting. Then the heifer must be burned in his sight, its skin, its flesh, its blood, and its offal is to be burned. And the priest must take cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet wool and throw them into the midst of the fire where the heifer is burning. Then the priest must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and afterward he may come into the camp. But the priest will be ceremonially unclean until evening. The one who burns it must wash his clothes in water and bathe himself in water. He will be ceremonially unclean until evening. Then a man who is ceremonially clean must gather up the ashes of the red heifer and put them in a ceremonially clean place outside the camp. They must be kept for the community of the Israelites for use in the water of purification. It is a purification for sin. The one who gathers the ashes of the heifer must wash his clothes and be ceremonially unclean until evening. This will be a permanent ordinance both for the Israelites and the resident foreigners who live among them. Whoever touches the corpse of any person will be ceremonially unclean seven days. He must purify himself with water on the third day and on the seventh day, and so will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third day and the seventh day, then he will not be clean. Anyone who touches the corpse of any dead person and does not purify himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord. And that person must be cut off from Israel because the water of purification was not sprinkled on him. He will be unclean. His uncleanliness remains on him. This is the law. When a man dies in a tent, anyone who comes into the tent and all who are in the tent will be ceremonially unclean seven days. And every open container that has no covering fastened on it is unclean. And whoever touches the body of someone killed with a sword in the open fields, or the body of someone who died of natural causes, or a human bone, or a grave, will be unclean seven days. For a ceremonially unclean person, you must take some of the ashes of the heifer burnt for purification from sin and pour fresh running water over them in a vessel. Then a ceremonially clean person must take hyssop, dip it in the water, and sprinkle it on the tent, on all its furnishings, and on the people who were there, or on the one who touched a bone, or one killed, or one who died, or a grave. And the clean person must sprinkle the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day he must purify him, and then he must wash his clothes and bathe in water, and he will be clean in the evening. But the man who is unclean and does not purify himself, that person must be cut off from among the community, because he has polluted the sanctuary of the Lord. 
the water of purification was not sprinkled on him, so he is unclean. So this will be a perpetual ordinance for them. The one who sprinkles the water of purification must wash his clothes, and the one who touches the water of purification will be unclean until evening. And whatever the unclean person touches will be unclean, and the person who touches it will be unclean until evening. Then the entire community of Israel entered the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh. Miriam died and was buried there. And there was no water for the community, and so they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron. The people contended with Moses, saying, If only we had died when our brothers died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the Lord's community into this wilderness, so that we and our cattle should die here? Why have you brought us up from Egypt only to bring us to this dreadful place? It is no place for grain or figs or vine or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting. They then threw themselves down with their faces to the ground, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Take the staff and assemble the community, you and Aaron your brother, and then speak to the rock before their eyes. It will pour forth its water, and you will bring water out of the rock for them, and so you will give the community and their beast water to drink. So Moses took the staff from before the Lord, just as he commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the community together in front of the rock, and he said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock for you? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff, and water came out abundantly. So the community drank, and their beasts drank too. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to show me as holy before the Israelites, therefore you will not bring this community into the land I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, because the Israelites contended with the Lord, and his holiness was maintained among them. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Israel, You know all the hardships we have experienced, how our ancestors went down into Egypt, and we lived in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians treated us and our ancestors badly. So when we cried to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent a messenger and has brought us up out of Egypt. Now we are here in Kadesh, a town on the edge of your country. Please let us pass through your country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards, nor will we drink water from any well. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right or the left until we have passed through your region. But Edom said to him, You will not pass through me, or I will come out against you with the sword. Then the Israelites said to him, We will go along the highway, and if we or our cattle drink any of your water, we will pay for it. We will only pass through on our feet without doing anything else. But he said, You may not pass through. Then Edom came out against them with a large and powerful force. So Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. Therefore, Israel turned away from him. So the entire company of Israelites traveled from Gadesh and came to Mount Hor. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor, by the border of the land of Edom. He said, Aaron will be gathered to his ancestors, for he will not enter into the land I have given to the Israelites, because both of you rebelled against my word at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up on Mount Hor. Remove Aaron's priestly garments and put them on Eleazar his son, and Aaron will be gathered to his ancestors and will die there. So Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up Mount Hor in the sight of the whole community. And Moses removed Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eleazar. So Aaron died there on the top of the mountain, And Moses and Eliezer came down from the mountain. When all the community saw that Aaron was dead, the whole house of Israel mourned for Aaron 30 days.
God, sometimes we think that you don't play fair. Okay, that's not the truth. A lot of times we think that you don't play fair. We question your timing. We question your judgments. We question the order of things. We question blessings given, blessings withheld. Who are we that we are so arrogant as to question you, the creator of the universe? Perhaps it's our internal our internal set of how justice works. All I know is we actually have the arrogance to think that we're right about something. Case in point, your beloved and very hardworking, faithful servant Moses. I know a lot of people get to this part of the Bible and really struggle with what happened to Aaron and Moses. Aaron, we get a little bit because Aaron's always kind of caused problems. <laughs> he caused problems with the golden calf. He caused problems with Miriam. Um, I suspect based upon what we've read, we probably deserved him to go down for a while now. Again, that judgment call, right? But Moses, really? Moses who defended you. Moses who put up with... A, with over a million people whining at him. Moses who dealt with people who, who tried to take his power away from him. Moses who year after year after year was your faithful servant. And I, I know there's all this speculation from different people in the biblical community as to why you were mad at Moses. Some believe it was his anger that he was taking out that you were angry at the people he was taking out on them and so his anger was why you won't let him see the promised land other people believe that because you said speak to the rock and he didn't speak but he struck the rock instead that it may be that some say it's because he struck the rock twice I guess my stance on it God even though it in my heart, it hurts to see somebody that faithful to you do something wrong and you, you choose to punish them. I guess my stance isn't on the why. You don't even need a reason to do things that you do. <laughs> You're sovereign over everything. You created us. I know we keep thinking that we are all important. That there is some sense of entitlement to us. But honestly, even when something like this with Moses really tugs at our justice heartstrings, it's still not up to us. That desire to control outcomes, that desire to give blessings, take blessings away, choose disciplines, choose justice. It's not ours to give. It's not ours to question. And hopefully we haven't had anything this drastic happen in our own lives. But I know speaking from my experience, God, I got incredibly off track with you. Incredibly off track with the relationship that we had. I chose the world over you. I chose various habitual sins over you for years. And how faithful are you that you chose discipline to allow me to come back to realize how far away I'd gotten and for me to come back to you with open arms. You started taking things away from me. You took away money. You took away jobs. You took away people. You took away houses. Systematically taking things away so that I would understand that the only thing I had to hold on to was you. So we need to take off this self-righteousness that 
that says that we get to decide who is punished, to what extent they are punished. This is your world. You know the hearts of men. From the outside looking in, making judgment calls, not only doesn't that make sense, it's not our place to do it. God, today, remind us who is in charge. <laughs> and while you're reminding us who's in charge and that you're sovereign over everything, also help us always remember it's because of how much you love us that you choose blessings and you choose discipline and you choose consequences for us. I know sometimes at least with me in the past there are times when I wished you hadn't loved me so much but ultimately just like a, a bratty teenager soon realizes I knew that you did it all for wanting what's the very best for me and for that I thank you so much for all that you've given me so for the people listening if they're going through one of those hard times it just doesn't seem fair God, why are you doing this? This doesn't seem fair. Help us to remove those words from our heart and instead turn to you with thankfulness. God, I know that you have me at the very bottom of my world right now. And while I am down here at the bottom, let me lay anything else that's inside of me at your feet. God, I am yours. And I know whatever you have me going through right now, it is intentional. It is on purpose and it will be made for your good. And it will be good for me. And even though I cannot see that right now, it is not up to me to question what you are doing. It is for me to be faithful and know that you love me. You love me more than I can ever imagine, more than I can ever understand. And that is what I need to hold on to right now. So even though I might be going through the darkest time in my entire life, I know you haven't left me. I know you're right here. I know you're right here holding my hand. I also know without question that you will see me through this. Seeing me through this may, may end with me being in heaven with you. Or it may be me coming out on the other side of this here in this world and then helping other people with the same situation and glorifying you through it. But God, I do know that there has never been a single, a single dark, confusing, I don't get what you're doing, God, or what you're not doing, God, moment in my life that you haven't eventually shown me how glorious those moments truly were and that your love was all over them. Your fingerprints were all over those situations. Please help us remember that today, God. That you love us so much that you do this for our good, for the good of your church, for the good of your world. Thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.